Good evening, Lexbots. Now this is my second time trying to film this tutorial, so if I cannot get, not really a tutorial, but like, you know, vlog, talking video, education thing. So if I cannot get through this video, it just is not meant to be. Because I live in Chicago, and the weather in Chicago has been absolutely hating me, and I can see thunderstorms rolling, and I can see them. So my lights have been going all crazy like. Anyways, in part one of probably what's gonna end up being probably like a whole trilogy of skincare videos, I thought it was important to let you guys know like why I became an esthetician. First off, the things that I see being posted on the internet just shatter my little esthetician heart. And when I say shatter it, I mean more like completely terrifies it. I was just scrolling through Instagram like a couple weeks ago and you guys know how it comes up like the popular page of things that you'd be interested in now it's not really the popular page anymore. But I was like Instagram hopping. I see this picture of skincare and I'm looking at it and I'm reading the caption and it says that this lady uses apricot scrub which is a very very rough exfoliant on her face three times a day. Day. And it's recommending it for other people to do that and I'm like Ugh. I swear to god my face probably looked like the character from like the home alone cover But slightly more terrified and when I say slightly I actually mean like a lot So then I go on to continue reading that she actually uses even more than that on her face every day every day And is recommending it to people but then I'm looking in the comments because I'm like okay I'm like I need to leave a comment to this woman Maybe she just doesn't understand maybe she just doesn't really know skincare and like I know she's like attacking her skin and tearing it to little bits and pieces, but not everybody knows about skincare. So I'm like, okay, I gotta leave this woman a comment, but then I'm scrolling through the comments and another esthetician actually stepped in and said like, hey, you know, you really shouldn't be doing this on your face. It really is way too much for any skin type ever to exist. And then in the comments, she responds back, I'm an esthetician, I know how to do my face. And you know what, to be honest, I don't even have anything to say to that. So obviously it's not one of the reasons that I became an esthetician because I was an esthetician prior to social media. But that's definitely one of my motivations for making this video because not everybody really truly knows about skincare. But the problem that I run into a lot being on social media is that a lot of people, even though they don't know about skincare, they still make recommendations to other people and that really freaks me out. I also see a lot of times on social media, not that people would necessarily recommend things because they actually believe in it, but they recommend things because they can earn a commission off of it. This drives me insane. But the point is personally I've never really been like that. Like I don't stand behind products that I don't actually stand behind. If I recommended a product to somebody just to make like a dollar off of it and they ended up absolutely hating it or caused damage to their skin, I would feel terrible. But for the people on social media who are making these recommendations and you don't really know too much about the product or if it's gonna work for everybody, please do not recommend products that you don't know anything about. There is a difference between recommending something and being like, you know, hey, this worked great for me, it might work great for you. Not like, enter this coupon code and you can get this, 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 and this. And you can apply it to your face all at one time. It's like plastic surgery in a bottle. Need a facelift? Enter my coupon code. Need something for those wrinkles in that forehead? You can fix that right up with spackle. Spackle works great, I highly recommend it. Got wrinkles by your nasal labial folds? AKA smile lines? Man, do I have the product for you. You just have to heavily apply it four times a day. Every time you look in the mirror. Every time you think about food, because you know what? That's what I do. And don't ever smile again in your life. Trust me. I'm on YouTube. Mm, Lex, I think that's a little bit hypocritical because you're telling us this on YouTube as well. Yeah, but you know what though? Other YouTubers don't have a conversation with themselves on uh, camera. I do. And generally, I know what I'm talking about because if I don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you guys, I don't know. But for those of you guys who are not subscribed to my channel, to so my main channel or to this channel, you guys will have a little bit of a better understanding that I do not recommend products that I do not stand behind. And in all of my skincare videos, of course, I'm going to say this before everything pretty much, but I'll let you guys know what is recommended for certain skin types, what is not recommended for certain skin types. Types. And if it doesn't work for you, you guys can try out your own products. It's gonna be difficult to recommend things for every single person like in the comments and stuff because it's hard when I'm not actually seeing your face in person. Choosing the right skincare products is more to do than just the problem that you're having. It's kind of more of like, why are you having that problem? Which can really only be determined by seeing you in person. So I'm hoping that these skincare videos can at least help you guys out, especially those of you who actually do have very oily skin like I do. So back to why I even became an esthetician in the first place. Now when I was like 10 years old, roughly, I started breaking out. I started getting a couple pimples, you know, here and there. Not terrible. But when I got further along in high school, I'm pretty sure it was near the end of high school, my cheeks just broke out so bad in grade three acne. And trying to figure out exactly why this happened, it's kind of like multiple 
factors were happening at once. First off, around this time, my blood sugars were a little bit more out of control. I'm a type 1 diabetic for those of you guys who are not subscribed to my channel, or maybe just don't pay attention when I'm talking. So that was playing a factor in the acne as well as stress, generally just growing up, and things of that nature. But regardless, it all happened in like a week. I tried absolutely everything that I could find. I tried products from Walgreens, I tried Proactive, I tried many different brands. I went to several dermatologists. I've been on Tazerac, Retin-A, Duac, a couple oral medications. I can't remember the names of them. I never really stuck with the oral medications. Obviously not all at the same time. And it wasn't actually until I started going to a medical esthetician with a dermatologist that owns the shop, I guess you could call it, that my acne really started to clear up. And at that point going there, it really felt like absolutely nothing was going to work. So when things started to work, it was just like a miracle. I really felt like I was in good hands. Like for once that somebody actually cared about the condition of my skin and not necessarily just giving me medicines and trying to get me out of the office. So after about a year of chemical pill treatments, my acne finally went away. I had almost no acne whatsoever. Of course, this was also tied in with like some upkeep at home, generally how to wash my face, how to do my toners and things like that. After that, they recommended that I had a couple photo facials to get rid of any sort of scars and spots that I had left over. I had two or three of those and I'm pretty much where I am, where I am today. Absolutely nothing compared to what I had before. So the main reason that I went into being an esthetician is not only because I enjoy being at the office, I enjoy the environment, I liked seeing the clarity on my skin, and I liked knowing that they help people so much. I also understood like what it felt like to not really want to go to the store without makeup on or piling foundation on your face or hoping that one matches because you're a redhead and every single thing that you put on this foundation makes you look orange with acne. But I understood what it felt like to not look in the mirror and feel like yourself or see your own skin. You're just seeing these patches on your face that you couldn't do anything about. And I feel like a lot with acne really is in your own head and what you're seeing in the mirror because a lot of people outside aren't like, oh, look, that girl has acne. I don't think the general public really cares. Well, there are some people out there that'll give you a hard time about acne, but you know what? Those people need to look a little bit deeper because honestly, they are not worth your time. If they can only look at you and see the acne on your face and not who you are on the inside, you don't need them in your life. So not only did I go to aesthetics because operating lasers is fun, but I also decided to become an esthetician to really actually help people because honestly, I feel like the profession that you're in, you need to have somewhat of a background and a passion behind it. You don't just go into things because you can't. I feel like the people that help the most are the people that are able to relate to different things. Now while acne is kind of like my life specialty, I'm also very well educated in everything else in skincare as well. I actually became licensed in skincare right around when I turned 18. And although my main career is body painting and doing all kinds of like crazy monsters and everything, I'm constantly keeping up with my education for aesthetics and skincare and my passions and all these other subjects as well. Also please keep in mind that just because I got chemical peels and just because I got photo facials doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. If you guys visit a medical spa, they'll of course recommend and look at your skin and figure out what is going to fit your needs. But if they do recommend things and you've been on something like Accutane, you absolutely need to tell them if you have been on Accutane. I could do a whole separate video on Accutane. Personally, I am not a big fan of Accutane. I don't necessarily like what it does for your body. I might talk about that in another video, not this one. But if you're in there and you're getting procedures or treatments done and you've been on Accutane and you've been on it for ever or you have been off of it for even just a year and they're still wanting to do it on you, you get out of that office as fast as you can. If you've been off of Accutane for six months and they want to do a treatment on you, get out of that office faster than you have ever gotten out of anything else in your life. Faster than you've ever gotten out of going to school on a test day. If you go somewhere and they want to do a microderm abrasion or a microderm over your red inflamed acne. If you are sitting in the waiting room right now and you're listening to this video and they're about to do a treatment on your face and you're not sure about it or involves scraping at your actual acne that you're having right now, you get out of that chair that you're sitting in and you leave that office now. Pause the video, get up and leave, make sure they know what they're talking about. Just like anything else in life, I would personally do a lot of research before going to a medical spot. I'm not saying that medical spas are bad. Obviously I recommend them because I am an esthetician, but please do your research online of like reviews and how people did with their results and everything after visiting that office. Just like everything else, there are places that are a little bit sketchy. If someone is telling you that your brain might go numb from Botox, you get out of that office. If someone is telling you that your nose might start bleeding and your liver might be popping out of your body because of this treatment, you get out of that office. Office. You do not return to that office for any other reason. If someone is recommending a hydrofacial for your acne, for your rosacea, for your wrinkles, you actually stay in that office because they're taking pretty good care of you. So if you guys want to stay tuned for my personal favorite products for my skin, you guys can find the second video here. Obviously I didn't use any products in this video today, but don't forget to go to Facebook and check out my page, Made You Look by Lex and Like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to contact me.